Hi, Zach Smith here with Fiorentino Pear Anchor. Several years ago, I teamed up with Portland Pudgy Incorporated to help develop a parachute sea anchor specific to their polyethylene multifunction dinghy. Since then, a lot of Pudgy owners, including those interested in purchasing the Pudgy, have had a lot of questions regarding the boat and how to use the parachute sea anchor. So I thought I'd fly up to Maine and meet with the inventor and put this video together to help answer some of those questions for you. Today I'm visiting the Portland Pudgy manufacturing facility for this really unique multi-function dinghy. And I'm going to have David Holbert, really the inventor of this really neat boat, describe what those multi-function capabilities are. Mm -hmm. Well, there are four primary functions. One is it's a tough, everyday tender that you can row. Second one is you can motor it. Third, you can sail it. Fourth, it's designed to withstand a hurricane as a lifeboat. It has a CO2 inflated exposure canopy that can be preset and completely encapsulates the boat. What I liked about this boat, not only the fact that it can hold a lot of weight, and I believe the Coast Guard tested at, what was it, 18, 1865 15? pounds. 65 pounds. To so, submerge it to the gunnels. So it can hold a lot of weight, and also you store everything inside the boat itself. Everything. Right, the, the, all the long items like the, for the proactive version, which means it's the version you can actually sail to safety as opposed to floating around aimlessly in a, uh, a life raft. This whole sailing kit stores in, the, in it is an aft hatch here, it stores in there, the oars store in there, fishing rods can store in there. And then over here and on over that side. here, you get your ditch bags, and here you have the Fiorentino para anchor that we, and I was, what was neat about that is David hired me a long time ago to test the equipment. So he sent us a Portland Pudgy in California. We went outside the Golden Gate Bridge, had pretty good sea size, about 14 foot seas, I think. Yeah. I was trying to test the parachute sea anchor to make sure it wouldn't invert, turn inside out. So there are a couple things that I've done to make sure that doesn't happen. And I can't tell you how comfortable I felt in this boat. Okay. I mean, it, it holds you like a glove. So th that's what I really felt good about it. I, didn't, I wasn't worried at all. And, and then I watched the trawler fall off the top of the wave into the trough, and I'm thinking, wow, that was kind of unique. <laughs> and, and the captain says, okay, done with the test, we're going home. Right. But let's, to get back to where you store stuff, and then here... Here you store the, the exposure canopy. It's a three-section CO2 inflated exposure canopy and floats and inflates in 17 seconds. Yeah, but what I liked was, I, I, I like this idea that you were talking about, we talked about earlier, where you can kind of preset and put everything, attach it ready. So if you're traveling offshore, crossing say like the Atlantic, right. you can have the exposure canopy ready to go and then you put the cover and the cover was, was that to keep everything in place or? Yeah, when the exposure canopy is preset and you can preset it in about five minutes, it just clips on and belts on. Um, yeah, but I like the cover. I'm talking about the cover when you're traveling. You put a cover over all this while you you're traveling, You put it over because right? otherwise the, the exposure canopy is like sort of a deflated tent. You know, if you have 80 knot winds, you're really confronting serious conditions. And uh, you need to hold that all down. Okay. Then you have the boat cover on tight. So to deploy it, then you whip off the boat cover. There are two lanterns you pull and you're, the, you're, you're uh, exposure canopy inflates, inflates. In and then you've seconds. got your ladder where you would go ahead and just pull your boarding line out of here and you pull that open like so. Correct. That way everybody can board the ladder after you bend the ship if somebody happens right. to be in the if water. If they're course. in the water then you can get up. Of course our first water. thing we want to do is try to step into the dinghy first. Exactly. And it will not flip on you if you crawl up over the side. We had a 275 pound tester get into the dinghy from the side without shipping any water. And I've done this before, and it's a great diving right. platform as well. You could just do so much with this right. boat. So this is the uh, exposure canopy, and we're pre-setting it if you're passage making. So the, if there's a front, middle, and rear section, and they're clearly marked front, front, they go together, back, back, they go together and front, front, back, back, and enter, enter. Uh, the way you clip it on is there's, this front section gets belted on and it stops at this point so you don't overinflate the tubes. The second section, the second part, gets clipped on. You can see it's a very quick, it's, it's a very quick setup. You can set the whole thing up in about five, five minutes. Uh, now in the middle section, that was a part I had a question on. Yeah. So, 
I know these two, the front and back inflates per CO2. Correct. Uh, pulling on the cord. <coughs> 17 seconds. 17 seconds, that's Sorry. fast. <laughs> and the middle section you inflate. So if I'm gonna cross the Atlantic Ocean, mm -hmm. you go ahead and you inflate this manually ahead of time, correct? Right. Okay, and here's the part I wanna be clear on. On the zipper setup, you go ahead after you manually, well, I guess you do the zippers first, manually inflate this, but you leave these this open on each end, right. on both sides, okay? But it's inflated, these stay deflated. You put your cover over the boat to hold everything in place, you know, because it could be raining, high winds, and all right. that kind of thing. It's just a boat We want to protect everything, you know, from sun damage and all of that. So now it comes time to boat sink, and oh my God, we got to leave. Do we pull the cords first? Uh, what do we do now? We're getting ready. The, the, the dinghy's in the water. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's on a tether. We now need to abandon ship, so we go ahead and pull the cords to inflate the two canopies. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, so this is inflated. This was already manually inflated, so we don't have to worry about messing with that. We now all board the boat if possible. We try to board mm -hmm. a dinghy first. Not, instead of jumping in the water and getting into a dinghy, we want to be able to you know, get into the boat first right. if possible. Release the tether. And then now, once we're all on board, we can go ahead and close the zippers up to make this a full enclosure. And then at that point, that's when we deploy, deploy a, a parachute sea anchor to help stabilize the boat, right? The wind will push your boat Correct. backwards, and that will help pop open uh, the parachute. Because if we don't have any kind of parachute sea anchor deployed, what will happen is the thing will end up sideways, and it'll con constantly roll uh, in the waves. But what I do like about this uh, Portland Pudgy is with that inflatable top you're like a big nice strong capsule so I think it's going to heal over and then pop back up sort of like a cork so it that's what I like it, about that. It's self-writing when it rolls it's self with, pe with okay. people in it. And that's possible. I've heard stories of life rafts not inflating or partially right. inflating and getting completely rolled and now you have to get out of the life raft to help reset it yeah. right read it get it right it right sided but you don't have to with this one is that correct? You don't. That's that's cool. That's really nice. And of course, you're in an unsinkable. Yeah. So if a shark comes here. swimming by and says, "Boy, that looks <laughs> yummy," takes a bite and doesn't like the life raft, it starts to sink. It's going to take a bite. You'll just have a big gash in the side he'll of your boat. Your, he'll break a tooth. Oh, he'll break a tooth, and yeah. now you have some a souvenir. So this is the boat cover to protect the exposure canopy so that it doesn't blow around in severe winds. So we go ahead and go ahead and so remove this? So what we first have to do is just whip this off. Okay. Oh, okay. And Here, there's your this. exposure canopy underneath ready to be and, inflated. And this was the center piece that we've already infl inflated manually. Correct. We've blown into it, so these are inflated and we're ready to go. Basically, right? Right. And these are the lanyards you've been talking about that we just pull and then place everything. Right. right. Connected to the CO2 cell. So what do you want? Do you want to do the front one first? Well, let's do the front one first. Okay. You ready? Yeah, we're ready. Okay. This is very cool. I like this. Isn't that nice? There it is. And then, oh, and this is where you're set. Oh, that's why you have the zipper only partly zipped. Right. Look, look how easy that'll be so to climb in. So now, we have a couple of feet here. You leave this open, and yeah. you're preset on both sides so you can get in either side. I like it. And then you can zip it down from the inside. So we're ready then to go ahead and put this on the water and do some parachute seeker deployments. That we are. Excellent. And that little extra noise is, a, is a, it's blowing off extra pressure. So in warm weather, we'll, we'll exhaust that in cold okay. weather it's fine and then don't you have something for inflating oh yeah here's here we go yeah. what, what was this well here so let them let okay. everybody take a look at that this is a one the co2 cylinders you can use once uh, then you have a, a bellows pump here this opens up so you can top off the cylinders in, in hot weather in in cold weather if you need to add more uh, and then this is an oral valve you can do the same thing this so you right have here. three means of inflation I know we have two options for deploying the parachute sea anchor from the Portland Pudgy. Right. Now, in calmer weather, we can go ahead and loosen the straps up, and, and let me know if I'm uh, incorrect. We can loosen the straps up on the inflatable bladder here and deploy everything from the front. But I think a lot of times, if we're actually stepping into this boat, we're probably in heavy seas, mm -hmm. so it wouldn't probably be the best decision to loosen this up. We want to keep it nice and tight so when the water is hitting the canopy, we're not flooding inside of the <coughs> vessel itself. So we go ahead and attach 
the rope there to the bridle. And then you would run it back into the vessel itself, and then we can deploy it midship from the middle of the boat. The parachute anchor. Okay. Right? Does that sound right, David? Yes, that's exactly right. And right. this here, uh, when we pull this tight, this is all covered by the uh, boat cover. Right. So. Okay. So everything's right. nice and snug ahead everything's of time. Snug. You don't see anything. It's all set to be launched. So you would do this before putting the boat cover up. So we'd have this all deflated. Yes. The pair anchor is ready to go. Boat cover over it, mm -hmm. and then we just pull the boat cover up, inflate everything. Now we deploy the parachute right. sea anchor, and the parachute sea anchor will help pull the bow of the pudgy into the seas, which will stabilize the boat. I'd rather take the waves on the bow than on the side of the boat, beam right. of the boat. I like to be tethered uh, to the boat when I'm recovering equipment. This is a rather small parachute anchor, so there's not a whole lot of loading, enough to help pull the bow of the pudgy into the weather, but not a situation where it's gonna pull me overboard, but I would still be tied to the boat. And if there's other people on board with you, they can help you uh, hold on to you so you don't fall overboard. You can see the parachute's gonna be surfacing here pretty soon as I put loading on it. You'll see any kind of pulling on that rope, you'll see the parachute start to rise to the surface. Now I might shorten the rope, and, and tie a bowline or a knot on the bridle itself in calmer winds where I'm just trying to slow my drift. Maybe I wanna, here comes the chute right here. You might wanna go ahead and, got it. Okay, we're good. There we go. So here comes the parachute anchor. Then when I recover it, I just grab a couple lines. Here we go. Now we're going to pack the Fiorentino pair anchor. Usually I'll set the hardware kind of aside. And then we're gonna flake the rope back and forth. That makes it easier to unpack uh, later on. This happens to be a soft ply rope, which makes it a lot easier to, to deploy and retrieve. But this is the trick, always flaking back and, and forth especially after you're done deploying the equipment. That's why I was talking about when I do deploy the parachute sea anchor, I go from the bridle end first, just in case you got an unusual twist with the rope. You just don't know. Things, any kind of kit that you have on board your boat, you know, can shift a little bit and equipment can become disarrayed. So all I'm doing, again, is flaking back and forth. So that way when I deploy the equipment, I'm not having any, any ropes kind of twisting up and, you know, doing this kind of kind of set up here, okay? Rather simple for the Fiorentino pair anchor. And we have the same basic length as you have on life rafts, which is required by the Coast Guard. Approximately 100 feet is what we have on this setup here. Almost have it ready to be packed. And then what I do is I'll place the hardware on top of the rope here, and then we will use these little hooks to hold everything in place. And this is for the snap hook that is attached to the bridle of the Portland Pudgy. I can singe this down like so. And then the parachute anchor does fit inside one of the portholes inside the boat itself. So we open up the hatch, slip this inside. But what I really like actually is it being on the forward seat, the very forward seat near the bow. I like this kind of being tucked away underneath that bench. To me, that just seems to be faster and easier to, to grab. And David had talked about putting a boat cover and having uh, the exposure canopy and everything ready to go. I kind of like that a lot because I can see if you're in the water and, and the boat's sinking and you have to pull everything out of the hatches and attempt to uh, put it all together in rough seas, I think that would, it would be a challenging 